One of the most important aspects in quality improvement projects is the measures. How do you select the measures and what type of measures do you select? We all know that you know, the, the saying by Peter Drucker, if you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. Therefore, measurement of quality improvement project is critical. Hi, uh, I'm Abdul Jazzy. I'm the editor in chief uh, of Global Journal on Quality and Safety in Healthcare and uh, consultant oncologist at the Cincinnati Cancer Advisors. I'll be talking to you today about quality measures, types, selections, and application in healthcare quality improvement project. This video is based on uh, a learning corner article that was published uh, at JQSH. Uh, on September 13, 2020. Learning objectives of this video uh, are how to define quality improvement measures and, and the different types they are there, um, discuss how to select uh, relevant measures to your projects, and then explain how to use the measures in quality improvement projects. Uh, let's just start with uh, what uh, are the quality measures. Um, you know, there are different def definitions, but let's take the CMS definition by saying that they are tools that help us measure or quantify healthcare processes, outcomes, patient perception, uh, organizational structures or system that are associated with the ability to provide high quality uh, healthcare. So there are four types of uh, measures, process measures, outcome measures, structural measures, and balancing measures, and I will try to explain each one of them in the subsequent uh, slides. Process measures reflect the compliance with action implemented to achieve the goals of the QI projects. For example, for QI project that you know relevant to acute MI, myocardial infarction, one can select the following um, uh, processes to measure. You know, for example administering thrombo, uh, thrombolytic therapies within 90 minutes from the onset of symptoms or giving aspirin before arriving to the hospital. A checklist is a classic example, classic methods to assure following certain processes. And when you're selecting the process measures, you should really try to select uh, processes that impact the outcome of the patients whenever possible. Outcome measures are usually the most important and most pertinent measures in any quality improvement projects. And they are usually related to patient's health status. Um, and of course, there are other things uh, that you know could be outcome measures. But for example, in the MI projects we are taking as an example, uh, we can use post-MI 30 days mortality, uh, pre-hospital mortality, or the incidence of severe heart failure. Uh, so these are all meaningful uh, outcome measures for patient health status. Um, and, you know, try to use meaningful outcome, especially those that impact patients. There are other outcomes that, you know, could be related to cost effectiveness, could be related to saving, could be related to satisfaction and other things. Uh, but, you know, the, you know, one of the most important uh, outcome measures are things that reflect the patient's status, health status. Structural measures usually reflect the capacity of the organizations, including systems and processes. For example, for the MI projects, we're discussing what are the number of board certified cardiologists on staff? What is the patients to the emergency nurse uh, ratio? Um, or the availability of cardiac cath lab uh, 24 uh, hours a day. Balancing measures refer to consequences of implementing a QI projects that were not necessarily intended. These consequences could be uh, negative impact, such as a staff overload, staff dissatisfaction, staff attrition, or additional financial cost to the organizations. Or or it could be positive, actually, such as cost saving, uh, improving patient satisfactions, or staff satisfaction. How to select uh, measures of quality that relevant to your project? 
you know, usually quality improvement projects focus on one or more of the six domains of quality, safety, timeliness, equity, efficiency, effectiveness, and patient-centered uh, care, the steep acronym that we all know. The first step before you start any project is really to quantify and define the problems you are going to address. What type of the, what type of problems? What is the magnitude of it? What po what population it affects? And then when you are going to select a measure, select the measure that quantify that problem because that's what we'll be using to see what happened to the problem down the road, and and monitor basically your projects, and. And then, you know, this, we you know, usually, you know, the measures you select, if your institutions that do not have specific measures, you can select measures from um, international organizations that I listed here, such as uh, National Quality Measures Database or uh, International Library of Measures or CMS Measures Inventory Tool and so on. Um, and if you have a professional organization that has measures within your specialty, it will be also a good idea uh, to select that so you can benchmark it with your peers if that organization is collecting the information. This is a very important table of things you should consider when you are selecting and applying measures of quality improvement projects. I'm not going to go through the details of that. You can read that in the article, but I'll go briefly over this. So what is the name of the quality measure? What is the source of, uh, for the measure? Where did you get it from? Uh, what, is the what, what is the type of the measures? Is it process measure, outcome measure, a balancing measure, and so on? And then um, what is, is this measure the best uh, measure to use for this project? What is the purpose of the measure? Is it quality, is it quality improvement projects uh, you know, based on uh, data that your institution collected, uh, based on uh, accreditation feedback, or, or aiming for accreditation? What is the unit of measure, of uh, the unit for, for, of measure you know, that you are going to use? How is the measure is calculated? How is the data collected and what are the source, what, are, what is the source of the data and who will be collecting the data. Um, and then after that, how will the data will be reported and analyzed, analyzed and reported in, in sequence. And uh, what do the changes in the measure values mean? You know, so these are very important aspects to take, um, to, to take into account. And each one of them, you know, deserve one, one talk by itself, but you know, this is just an overview. How to use quality measures in the QI projects. Step one, the first step, as I mentioned earlier, in any QI project is to define the problem by answering these questions. How was the problem identified? What does the problem or whom does the problem affect? And then what is the magnitude of these effects? The second step is to define the aim of the projects from one or more of the six quality domains. What are you aiming to do? to address this problem. Um, and then the third step will be to select appropriate quality measures and methodology that will you be used to determine if the proposed solutions lead to an improvement in quality. And you know, we, we all need to know about the PDSA cycle, plan, do, study and act. And there will be a, another learning corners in the journal to, to read about uh, this PDSA cycle. I'm just going to focus on the use of measures in the PDSA cycle. So in the plan phase, you select the proper measures for the problem. You define all components of the measure. So that's the first step as we agreed in the previous slides. Do you collect and monitor the measured data? Study, you analyze changes in the measure, measure value and decide if it's improvement or not. Decide about required changes and if the measure is still valid, because you may discover that, you know, the measure is not the best or you need to add another measure or whatever. Um, you know, so then act, you implement changes based on um, the lesson learned and continue collecting the measure value. 
these are the references for the article and it's i know it's a small font but you can read them uh, in the article in the journal and you can find this article and others in the in the learning corners and other section of the journals at www.jqsh.org the aim of the journal is to publish a real life example of quality and safety improvement outcome and project uh, from various disciplines envi uh, environments and countries these are examples of the learning corners uh, article that you could read in the journal with this i conclude the video about uh, measures uh, and i hope you know it was beneficial to you and hope to see you soon in, an in another video